and welcome to the Floor Fauna Full channel. I'm Martina and I am sitting in front of my very pretty hydrangea and I wanted to show you that there's a lot more to my garden and my veg growing experience than just tomatoes. <laughs> um, I can imagine you think there's only tomatoes here um, because I've been doing the great tomato trial. However, I think um, you'll find there is a lot more and a little bit of my fauniful is lizzie here she doesn't like to be held all the time not on her turn not on my terms on her terms yes so without any further ado i'm going to try to show you some of the things that have been growing here both veg and some very few flowers but um, i think it's uh, worth a tour so, as you know, um, I live on a very small, um, what I would probably call a, an urban plot. However, I do live in the country. Um, I live in a very suburban part of town. But um, just behind me are fields and just on the other side there's sheep farms. Down the road is a nursery. So I do live in the country, I just live in a very small plot of land. Very small house, double the size of a tiny house, I would say. So a lot of people have been wondering about my Euronymous um, after I completely hacked it down in, I think it was February, and it is just coming back very, very nicely. Um, you really don't see any um, like bare spots anymore and I like it a lot better um, at this this height it's a lot more manageable trust me so here is along the eastern facing wall of my garden um, I have planted for the next crop rotation some lettuce and uh, I think it's doing really well. I put it in like maybe a week and a half ago, maybe a week ago even, I don't know, but it's doing really well. And so is this little girl. She's doing really well, aren't you? Yeah, there we go. So just before it goes over, I wanted to show you the beautiful Asiatic lily that I have just beautiful the plant itself looks awful it looks very similar to this one but it just gives a little pop of color into the garden oh I'm gonna try to get a better view here I have my patio apple keely it has quite a bit of fruit on it. Um, it is in a pot. I know that's not ideal, um, but I am quite pleased with the amount of fruit that I have this year. I'm watering it regularly, um, almost every day. We've had kind of a drought, so it's been getting a lot of water for me. Um, some of the leaves look a little bit dry, even though I have been but uh, watering, but I think it's gonna be okay. Oh, and this is Vernon the Vine. I think he's into his 12th year now, and he still has no fruit. I think I'm going to need a bigger pot and move him to a different place. They need six to eight hours, which he is getting, but I think it's the warmth that he's not getting. So I think I might be uh, moving his location in the autumn. Somewhere in there, I have some of my onions, which in the spring when I planted them looked like a great and very sunny spot. However, with the tomatoes and um, the massive Hungarian poppies that I've had, um, which look beautiful by the way, um, if anybody in the UK needs seeds, just comment down below. I'm happy to uh, 
send them. I'm saving all of these seeds for my colleagues at work because I made a bouquet for them and they really love it. Just behind there, if I can show you, are my, well, supposed to be shallots, but they're also shaded out completely. So next year, different location. I was, I'm surprised about that. So, and here we have my broad beans. I've already gotten a couple of um, harvests off of them, and I was afraid that they're probably going over <clears throat> and not producing any more buds. I thought, I never know when to pick them and when to, um, without losing re-flowering. And they're not quite there yet um, from the size. And I can't really hold it. Uh, I can't really hold up my hand to you. Well, let me try. Um, you can see there's still got a little ways to go. Um, but I noticed here that this one is reblooming. So I'm very, very excited. Um, I might get a second crop, which means maybe about 10 more beans. I don't know. So here I have my um, lettuce, which has, is cut and come again, and it's done really, really well for me. I'm extremely um, happy with this. Taste is good. Um, it's one of those multi-colored uh, ones. And here you will be able to see that I have three. One's not doing too well, that little guy. In that little guy in the back is not doing too well compared to his counterpart right in front of him. However, um, we just got a ton of rain uh, yesterday and I think everything is going to really um, <laughs> go mental, I think, I hope. <laughs> um, but these are celeriac and I've never had luck with them in Germany. Um, but. These three are the only scenes that actually um, did well for me. This is a German variety. Oh no, it's the English variety. It's the Monarch. So I did buy, when I was in Germany in January, I did buy some celeriac seeds with a, named Prince. Um, and I guess none of them came up. Um, as you see on the tomato trial, you see my uh, radish, which I'm letting go to seed, um, and one of my lettuces. I still can pick the leaves. I um, Let me try. Yeah, not bad. Um, still perfectly edible. At the beginning of this season, I did plant one um, or I did plant a couple of uh, sugar snap peas from Botanical Interests. And this one is doing really well. I've had the seeds um, just about forever and um, they still are viable, which really makes me happy. So that is looking good. That one's probably almost gone over. The red noodle beans, thanks Roots and Refuge, are doing quite well on my leaning trellis but I still have not seen any be oh wait I think I've just spotted one and here we go my first bean that I've spotted how excellent these are my early potatoes the one in the lower um, the one that's smaller is actually was planted at the same time that the one is kind of looking at the end of its life. I'm really surprised. This is, um, I think I put three tubers in this, this pot, the black pot, um, and it's finally going over. It's had some ups and downs, but I think, I hope this year I'm gonna get a decent potato crop. I hope I didn't put in too many in that pot. I think I put two in that one, so we shall see. So I'm walking towards the, what is that? The south side, that's north facing. 
and um, here's one my also Craig that gets both the eastern and the western sun right now it's the western sun and you see my shadow but this is uh, I planted one tuber here and I'm already seeing that I have some new potatoes underneath the ground I've mounted it up so that's really good just um, here on the side let me try to move away this is my rhubarb plant that I got from Bob um, which went mental at his house he gave me two plants I didn't want more and um, this seems to be a really good spot for it I think I am going to move the other one that I'm going to show you just now which was actually bigger than this one I think I'm gonna move it here maybe just next to it there is a tree stump there so I'm kind of a little bit unsure if that's gonna be a problem I have put and this is a whole new uh, episode I think I have put Bokashi in this little bed and I've planted the potatoes here because it does break up the soil a lot this is not very good soil it's n there's never been anything done with it I think as long as uh, this house has been in existence so I'm trying to amend the soil a little bit just so it's a little bit more friendly to growing things anything really because I could barely get in a shovel or a uh, hoe or anything so um, I think it's looking better and there's a lot of little stones in here too so let's hope so here i'm showing you um, my beans sadly none of my peas or beans did anything so i got borlotti beans and they are growing to the left of the pole they're supposed to climb up the drain pipe but I don't think they're really doing it. And honestly, um, I really didn't force them to go up there next year. There's always next year. And I have planted some runner beans here. I believe it was runner beans. So I'm quite excited about that. They still have a ways to go. I haven't really looked for beans yet because they're flowering so nicely right now. I don't think that there should be anything in there, which is sad, but oh well. Number three, the tomato that bit the dust. Um, oh, here we go. I do have one cucumber um, coming up. I've planted a couple on either, or over here. These should be a dwarf variety and um, good for pickling or canning or whatever you call it in whatever country you're looking at this in. So quite excited about that. I have 45 days from the seed going into the soil to getting the harvest. Um, I put it in about probably 10 days ago. So at the end of maybe August, I can expect maybe my first tomatoes. And September is usually pretty nice here, so I'm really hoping that that's going to be all right. This is my Morello cherry. I had about 20 very nice um, cherries that I've frozen. Um, I left about 10 extra to the birds. Um, I'm kind of a sucker for wildlife, so I let I share. I'll just say it, I share. I had some great strawberries this year and they are also in the freezer right now. Um, due to the drought, some, some of it just kind of didn't really uh, do as well as I thought and I left some again for the birds. In this raised pot, let me move back, in this raised bed, I have um, a patio variety of plum and you can see I think I've counted five plums so I'm really excited about that let me just focus that on there and this is called a plum glory and I'm going to prune it so it gets like a lollipop shape again 
Um, it just went real. It did really, really well. Um, it looked a little sad in the winter time, but I think everything looks sad here in the winter time. I got this at Morrison's, by the way, um, for the UK viewers. Also at Morrison's, I got one of those um, olive trees and this is doing really well. I harvested one olive last year and it's full of buds. It is absolutely full of buds and we had such great weather that it was very Mediterranean last summer. So I think um, I might be lucky this year. If you go to um, Morrison's and look at these trees and then you look at mine, um, they have them right now <laughs> for sale. I was so tempted to buy another one, but I have one and I really don't have room for another one. But this is doing great in the raised bed. Um, it's just, it's gone mental. I've pruned it and the stalk is like three times thicker than uh, what you can buy um, in the stores right now. So uh, here I have, oh, another little cucumber which I'm very excited about, and my bay leaf plant. So I have plenty of bay leaf for soups in the winter time. Um, I'm trying to just let it grow at the moment. Um, I'll prune it back and then hopefully I'm going to get a little tree then out of it one day. Lemon balm looks a little sad right now because I have uh, harvested some and put some in the dehydrator. Sage, I cut back massively um, in the spring and it's looking really healthy. I don't think you can kill sage. Um, the only thing that kills it really is frost and we don't get that much frost here and we're pretty sheltered here so I think it should be all right. My peppermint is also harvested, also dried in the dehydrator and smells wonderful um, and it's just one that comes back over and over and over again. Here I have a gooseberry bush. I think I bought it at um, a box store and it didn't do that well but when uh, over here I have every pest that you could possibly have and soft, uh, gooseberry softfly was one of them and this got it pretty bad. I think you can see right here. I don't think that really affects the harvest. It just affects the, the strength of the plant. I did treat it with nematodes and um, I think it's all, it, it did all right. It, it does, not all of the leaves have been decimated. And this is a different one. Um, this is my true and tried, tested um, red gooseberry. It is the absolute producer. It is unbelievable. I brought it with me from Germany when I moved here. I've had this for probably 10 years now, probably even more, and it never fails to produce an absolutely wonderful crop. I had 750 grams of gooseberries just from this bush alone. Very nice. Thyme and chives. We've been using the chives this week. I've been on holiday or vacation and we had a staycation so it's really nice. We had omelets with fresh chives every day and it was just fantastic. So here, next to one of the piccolinis that's next to number nine right you don't see anything here and neither do i and i'm not surprised it looks dry but i watered it this morning so it should be fine however i have planted holy basil because roots and refuge said it was an absolute great great plant to have and um None of them came up. I tried in little seed uh, inside under grow lights, didn't work. Tried outside once, it didn't work. Tried outside twice, it didn't work. I tried under a cold frame as well, so five times, didn't work. So now I just chucked some 
uh, seeds in there. And um, that was about 10 days ago as well. I don't think it's gonna happen for me this year. But hey-ho, it's worth a try. Back in the backyard again. Um, I forgot to show you because it just, um, don't remember when I, you just pass it and there's, it's only green, you kind of forget. This is my white currant. Um, also was affected by saw fly a little bit. Um, I learned that you have to prune out the center to keep the airflow going. The, the saw flies don't like that. I did that. Also had um, nematodes um, and watered it with that, really doused it. I think this is gonna do the trick. Um, you just have to remember next year got a very little crop because I think the birds got to it way before I did. It's really hard to tell when the white currants are ripe. Red currants are red when they're ripe. <laughs> These just stay kind of greeny white all the time. So I think I was just a little bit too late. I usually do it at the, I uh, usually harvest at the beginning of July around July 4th, July 7th. There, that, that's been my true and tested harvesting weekend, actually, even when I lived in Germany, and it always worked. Um, I have a couple of red currant shrubs. One of them is all the way back there. I think if you really look closely, you might see a couple of red currants. And you can see how the sawfly, I did not treat this one, but you can see how the sawfly has, has decimated it. Um, I'm just gonna leave it there and see what it does. As you can see, it's consumed in other plants. It's just not in maybe the right spot, or I have to take out the other plants. I'd really like to get rid of um, this one. And the clematis just always goes wild, or clematis as they say here in the UK. So I think I'm gonna give it another chance. On the same token, I also have another standard um, gooseberry here. Didn't really produce, but I'm not surprised because it's just too shady for it. So let's go back over here. Lizzie's just passing by the really broad leafed plant. And that is a horseradish. I needed something that I can plant in the shade and apparently horseradish looks really nice. Now it is kind of invasive so I did plant it in a pot so I'm not a huge fan of horseradish but sometimes I do like it and a little with a little bit of cream or with a little bit of um, mayonnaise I think it'll work really well. Okay, now, please forgive me. So all the way tucked back here is a tiny little bush variety, dwarf variety of a cucumber. Small cucumbers. I thought it died and I can put in a video that you'll see why I think it died. And but it's getting a couple of cucumbers now. And I just noticed this maybe yesterday. So, this one is worse than a slug when it comes to cucumber leaves. She has decimated one that used to live right here. And there was one that used to live right here. And this little one ate all the leaves. Yeah, don't try to be cute now, because you're still doing it. So now you're gonna think I'm completely mental, but I was at a great garden center two days ago, and they had three very nice large patio pots for 20 pounds. And that's a good price here. I don't know where else you guys buy it. And I was so desperate for some cucumbers because uh, pickles are my favorite. That's my favorite thing to make. It's my favorite thing to eat. I would be devastated if I didn't have it. So 
look at that. It's already had, I've already harvested one. But look at that. They're a dwarf variety and the pickles do not, or the cucumbers do not get any bigger than really that. They might flesh out a little bit, but I couldn't resist. Along the same route, let me move out of the way, I bought this tomato, this bush tomato. And you can see I do have to thin it out a little bit, I think. Um, and it is a little bit showing signs of magnesium uh, deficiency, but I have put some Epsom salt with water on it. And I think, or diluted concentration, of course. And I think that will be okay. That is the original pot that it came in. So, and these go for $4.99 here in the UK. They're a good quality pot. And so I'm very happy with it. And it also has already some fruit on it. Now, <laughs> the pot didn't say what variety it is, but I did, it is, um, it has been sown from seed in the garden center that I bought it from. So I messaged them this afternoon and I really hope that they get back to me so I can tell you what it is and how it does because so far it looks pretty amazing. Now, these two, right, I have to explain. I'm a sucker for sickly looking plants in the grocery store, at garden centers and everything. And these had so many little cherry tomatoes on it that I couldn't resist. Now, the leaves looked a lot better than they do right now, but they're all dying back and I don't think there's going to be any more leaves coming. I have fed and watered them since I came home. I'm gonna wait a couple days, let those cherry tomatoes get really red. Um, they are a West Shore tomato, which I'm not familiar with. So if you know anything about it, please let me know. Here is, again, another one from the three for 20. So I got three of course. and I got a jalapeno plant. Bob wanted this one, so I said, all right. I have no idea to, how to figure out if they're ready to harvest or not. Um, I don't know. Do they turn red like other peppers? I don't know. And I've put them here. I originally had them along the south facing or the southwest facing wall, however, I think here they're going to get a lot warmer because of the the concrete really does warm up a lot um, here in the back and it is a lot more sheltered than anywhere else. Um, that is a bit of a wind tunnel where I have my other varieties so I thought this might be the best place for them because I have a little patio to, um, pepper here, not hot not spicy and I'm getting some little peppers again I'm not sure when to harvest these are is the fruit just as small as the plant um, do, I don't want to pick them too early because boy they're looking good um, I have three on this side right now and I don't want to pick around them too much but they have a lot of blooms as well as you can see so I'm very very excited I know I did show some of them to you on the on the uh, tomato trial video. Just so you're wondering, I do realize that that desperately needs water and I will be giving all of my plants water a little bit of a little drink tonight. But I just wanted to show you the other stuff first since the weather has been so nice. 
a couple of citrus trees here in the back. There's, I think, the orange and there's the lemon or the other way around. Um, I just bought them really, really tiny and I'm gonna see if I can grow them. Um, I do have a nice conservatory or a sunroom as I call it. So I'm pretty excited about that. If you see those onions, I wish I could claim them as my own. However, I did buy them in April as spring onions. I believe it was Easter time or maybe just before Easter time. And I read somewhere you can um, use them and just stick the roots at the bottom and um, they will grow into onions, which it really does look like they are doing. So I have two in there. Um, didn't expect them to grow this well. They're growing a lot better than the other ones. But like my tomato trial, this is the whole reason why I'm doing kind of stuff like this is to see where they really grow the best. So last but not least, I am going to show you something that you've seen in other videos when I go out into the front of the garden. And um, this is my garlic slash carrot raised bed. I moved it to the back because obviously these carrots are not doing their thing. Um, and I do need to get ready for the winter. And since this is probably the warmest place and with the most sun for the winter um, and the summer, I am going to plant some more carrot seeds tomorrow if the weather is nice and I will sure to bring you along. So there you have it. Um, this is my garden. Um, I do not only plant tomatoes. I've gone a little bit crazy with the tomatoes, as you can tell. Um, I didn't expect to buy that many and I didn't really expect all those piccolinis to actually um, do as well as they did because I'm one of those people, germination, termination, I shouldn't be doing it. But it really worked well for me, um, it looks like, but boy, do I have a lot of loss. Like I said, all my beans and peas, I lost scorzonera, I wanted to grow. I lost holy basil, lots of peppers, and that's why I kind of replenished it. Cucumbers, I, uh, did replenish some of them because I just love fruits from my garden and um, veg from my garden. So there we go. It's a little bit more subdued today, um, but I just thought I would share with you what I have. Oops. One thing that I forgot to show you was this little guy. It is a butterscotch squash and it's not doing well here at all. <laughs> um, does anybody have any ideas? Can I still transplant it or is it a goner? I just don't know. I've been feeding it with tomato feed um, every week just um, because right back there is one of the Elsa Crags that's facing east, which is doing quite well by the way, but you'll find out more tomorrow. And I just wonder, should I, should I risk it and transplant it or I don't know. Please post in the comments below. Bye.